Hello and welcome to day 13 everybody. I hope you're all doing very well. I thought I'd switch it up today and do a podcast. I really enjoy this medium. Um, connecting with you guys in this way is a, it's a little bit different than the video and I like that. Time to switch it up and for day 13, this is just going to be an all over the place, all about spiritual awakening. Um, and it's just going to be all over the place. I've got this like, I've got several pages of notebook um, insights and I really want to let them come through before they're not as alive in my body. So I just thought this would be a good way to do that. I think there's going to be some really helpful things in here. I'm starting to come back to myself a little bit after that four week encounter with a divine, you know, twin flame type of connection. Um, in those connections, we can really kind of lose ourselves, lose our center. We can get really enmeshed with the other person's field. And this is all meant to happen. We're meant to learn from this. But I can feel her stuff, you know, her energies just really starting to leave my field. I'm starting to begin to feel much more sovereign, much more Matthew. <laughs> And that's a really good feeling. It's nice to come back to myself after such an intense and powerful relational experience. Um, and I've been doing just some major letting go, deep, deep rest. I've been resting like crazy. It's crazy how uh, just stimulated my nervous system was for a month and I didn't even realize it. I didn't realize how much of a state of hypervigilance I was in until these last few days um, that I've been in Las Vegas and that I've able just to been a I've been able to just really deeply rest. And so the first thing on the notebook is feeling called to leave Tennessee and the mon monastic life there. Things were starting to get stagnant for me there. And, and sometimes we don't realize it until we look back on it. I didn't realize how stagnant things were getting for me energetically in Tennessee until my month long road trip and now being in the dynamic energies of a city like Las Vegas. And I'm just, it's interesting how I probably would have just kept staying there and staying there if life didn't take it upon itself to uproot me and, and have my car break down and have it so like I literally didn't have access to food. I mean, I had to leave. There was no choice. And the thing was, I was so comfortable there um, in every way that if my car didn't break down, who knows how long I would have stayed there without realizing that I was kind of stagnating energetically. And so that's been an insight I had. It's just how much more this has been actually really fun and exciting and how much my body's really appreciated the movement and just kind of living, you know, day to day here in Las Vegas. It's been totally great spiritually, energetically for the psyche. It's been very inspiring. It's I, I can feel how much more excited I am to bring through content. Um, so, yeah, that's been great. And, and I think it's like nice to have both. You know, some of us, we've been in the city for a while and we're called to monastic life. Some of you might feel that, oh, how, how good it would feel to connect in a rural area, to connect with yourself deeply in a monastery type setting. And then sometimes it's nice to shift back into the city. So I think both energies offer so much for our spiritual growth. It's just about listening to that calling, to that ebb and flow, and to not think that just because it's one way right now for you, that it's going to be that way forever, um, or you know, or not to resist that that mm, that feeling that's asking for change because you're comfortable, and that's when we do resist. <laughs> it's because that ego loves comfort, and so the ego will fight change when it's comfortable, and that's what mine was doing. But don't worry, the divine mother will make it. <laughs> So that you don't have a choice most of the time. Um, yeah, the next note, is, and I'm telling you, these are going to be all over the place, guys. The next quote is, or the thing I wrote down is, not being needy with Rover. Um, I noticed there's this app that you can hop on 
if you like dogs and cats and what it what you can do is one of the things is you can offer to house sit people's animals while they're away and so i hopped on this right away when i was coming to vegas because i thought this would be a great great idea to offer me um, some shelter while i started building up resources again because over the past month of road tripping i basically went through all of my resources road tripping combined with not taking sessions I just didn't have the space to do that or the time really. Um, so I thought Rover would be a really good idea and it has been. I landed in this awesome Rover with these three special dogs here in Las Vegas. And it was interesting in the initial interactions because what happens is you want to come meet the dogs and the people before they finalize it. They basically just want to make sure they feel okay with you in their home for however long they're gone. And I noticed how even though my circumstances are what they are, there wasn't neediness in my body when I was speaking to them. I wasn't like portraying this energy of, oh, please think I'm okay because I really need the money. I really need a place to stay, you know, because I knew my survival. I've learned that my survival, my well-being, my safety doesn't depend on other people. It is solely in the hands of the divine mother and this is such a powerful lesson to learn and this will help you dissolve a lot of that people pleasing energy is you actually don't need it's 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 like this fallacy we think like i, I always thought oh my my safety comes from views subscribers clients donations etc it comes from other people and in a sense that's true but it, it actually comes from the divine mother and she sends her support to us through other people um, so this lets us take the pressure off of these kind of interactions and it lets us just be ourself even when we're in a such situation where we have maybe limited resources and our human mind says we really need something to work out um, because a lot of times if we bring that kind of energy to something that kind of pressure those kind of expectations that's when we get in our own way and that's when we actually sabotage things from working out but when we can just be ourself and we're just relaxed um, that's when things just flow and so yeah I, I had it was I was just witnessing myself speaking with the the dog parents here in their beautiful home and I was just witnessing oh cool there's no neediness here I'm not really hoping you know, I have good intentions, of course. I have the intention that it's going to go well and stuff like that. Um, but it was just nice to, to witness that in myself and the changes that have happened there because this is my first time talking to what we can say, quote unquote, the normal world, normal people in a while. Um, and the shift has been really dramatic in how I used to be uh, around like just your everyday person. I used to be in sales and I had a lot of that neediness energy. A lot of that please validate and approve me approve of me energy and it, it was just a nice thing to notice like how that's dissolved and the reason a lot and the reason is because of my trust in the divine mother and knowing that my support comes through her um, essentially so that was a that was just something I wrote down is um, you know the more we know that the less people pleasing energy we have and the more actual love we can give because we're not looking to extract anything from somebody whether that's resources approval um ha having them like us we're, we're actually when we're just ourselves, we have a lot to give oh and that was really what i noticed is how when i was just being myself around these um dog parents here f with rover how it actually felt like a lot of peace flowing through me, a lot of love, a lot of space. I had a lot of spaciousness. It was, I was actually able to think about them a lot because I wasn't thinking about me and what they were thinking about me and are they going to like me enough to let me stay here and I really need this and if they don't do this, I'm going to be I'm not going to have enough money, whatever the mind might be thinking in those circumstances. I was able to just like shift my focus to them and shine a light on their trip and what's going on in their life and the dogs and taking it all in. I was able to really hear them and their needs. Um, and I was just felt like I was a space of peace and calm. And that was a really nice thing to notice is that when we don't have that people pleasing energy in our field so much, we can actually give more. We can actually be more loving. And that's counterintuitive, I know. Um, but that is something I noticed happening in real time. So 
that's another thing I wrote down um, on to the next. And I think my relational healing um, with my twin flame type connection has helped me see a lot of the stuff and like a lot of this relational stuff. I think relational relationships, just meeting people, things like that have become just so much easier since going through that, like the, the, that master's program, if you will, of one month of intense healing, relational healing with a powerful twin flame connection. Um, it really felt like getting like some type of graduate degree in, in relationships or, or something. It was like a crash course, though, very rapid course that I'm still kind of sorting through. Um, so, yeah, let's move on to the next point. The healing quality of creating the videos for me. So and this kind of goes this kind of plays off the last point is like so much of um the videos for me in the past at times has been about okay i need to do this because this is how i make money this is you know a lot of my perspective has been like if i stay in my power then i'll get more views um then i'll have more abundance and sometimes you know we're in that masculine and we're like okay we got to create to make money and it's like there's a truth there we got to take this action to to provide for ourselves to take care of ourselves and that's an act of love and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with like looking at your analytics of your business and figuring out how to generate more revenue and these things are great you want to grow um and you want to expand these are natural impulses when you're in your dharma you want to like really um, discover how to give your gifts more fully and it's great to see that external evidence that you are with more revenue more views more channel growth whatever these things are fine but sometimes i lose sight of just the healing quality of creating the videos if if nothing else if like i post videos and one person watches it zero people watch it whatever and that used to actually be the case that used to actually be what happened um i've reconnected with how healing they are for me and how really that's the reward you know like that's the 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 juice you know and and how it's how easy it is to lose sight of that but since i went on this um you know barrage or this you know rampage or whatever you want to call it of shooting lots of videos oh my gosh they've just been so healing and the reason it i i was able to tap into this is because i was shooting all of these videos and just scheduling them out so it wasn't like i was shooting them and posting them and getting that immediate gratification and feedback of likes and comments and stuff i've been shooting them and then they've been scheduled like as i'm it's a november 11th right now and you guys have literally only seen two videos of the 12 that i've produced so far and so what i'm noticing because you because i haven't been getting that instant gratification is like oh my gosh it actually isn't about that for me it's actually just because i love being a conduit i love just sharing my heart i love just giving just that act of giving is so nourishing for me um and just is so restorative and and ultimately heals me and and that's been a really cool thing that because i'm scheduling my videos ahead of time now and doing things a little bit differently in a more structured and planned way um for now um, i've been able to rediscover that um, whereas when I'm posting, whereas when I'm creating and just posting right away, I kind of get lost in the results of it and that's normal. That's what the mind does. That's what the ego does. And like, that's okay to look at results and, and look at the feedback, right. And learn from that. But it's just important not to lose sight of, um, why we're doing this ultimately. And that's just to be a servant of the divine. It's like living our Dharma is healing living our dharma is the quickest way um to expand our awareness in my experience you know living our dharma prayer 
and just to fall back in love with just the process, just the process of giving our gifts. Wow, can we just fall in love with that and let go of any expectations of what we think we should get in return? Because it's, it's when we have those expectations, it's when we have that neediness energy, that's when we really block the f inward flow. That's when we block being in re the receptive mode. It's really, you just got to let go to let in. And that's something that I'm re really reconnecting with. Um, and I just wanted to, to share that point because it, it's easy to lose sight of that. It's so easy to lose sight of that. Um, but it's kind of like a downward spiral when you get, when you start focusing on, on results too intensely, it's first of all, cause it's never going to be enough for that part of you with that insatiable desire for more. So even if you get like good results, they're only good, good enough for you for like a day <laughs> and then it's like you need better and then better and then better and it's just like this endless cycle because wanting always leads to more wanting um and it can get really negative because then you'll you'll start getting disappointed and then you'll start like if you post a video or whatever your art form is or your dharma if you share your gift and say you expected a certain result um, and you get less than that, then you'll kind of believe the result and you'll believe that you're not worthy. Oh, I'm not good enough. People don't like me. I should just give up. Why the fuck do I do this anyways? You'll start kind of believing these limited, limited and negative thought patterns. And this is just because there's trauma there because maybe we didn't receive enough unconditional love growing up or just whatever the case may be. And so then we start believing those, these things because we're too hyper-focused on the results and that can really set us back. It can take us into this place where we don't feel good enough to share anymore. I mean, I've been through this, gosh, hundreds of times, guys, like over and over and over again. Um, and I've, I have come to learn, and I'm sharing with you now, it's better to just focus on the work. Like the work is the reward. The work is where you want to put your attention. It's like you want to pay attention Put your focus on paying attention to the, to the work rather than getting attention, right? You want to put all the energy into paying attention to the work, to the mastery, to the craft, to sharing from your deepest place, to getting yourself in the best energetic, um, you know, state, the best state of presence you can and sharing from that place rather than putting your energy and attention on like, oh, am I getting the attention I think I should be getting or that whatever my ego says I should be getting or that's enough. Um, that's just going to shift everything for you. And it's really shifting things for me now. And that's part of the reason I've been scheduling out videos is I don't have to look. I don't have to get on YouTube every day now because my videos are scheduled, right? Um, I love responding to comments and I plan on doing that, but I don't have to do that every single day. I don't I certainly don't have to check every 20 minutes as I have done in the past at times. Dude, did I get a new comment? Did I get a new comment? <laughs> Cause when you get in that, that's a rut, you know, when you're in that place, it's a, you can get in that. It's like a really lack based reality. You start creating for yourself when you get obsessive over results, because like I said, it's never going to be enough. And, um, it just can be this downward spiral. So if you want to stay in more of an abundant paradigm, I would say just focus on the work, um, focus on how nourishing it feels just to give your gifts. And um, that's gonna help you a lot. And then just let the results be what they will. Like let, the, let God, you know, God is the decider of the results, right? Um, you just do your work the best you can. It's beautiful to move towards, you know, mastery in what you do, um, in whatever your gift is. But when we focus on results, it can really take away our life force energy, um, that we otherwise could be channeling into giving because guys, here's the universal law. What you give, you receive. It's one and the same. So just trust that. Just trust as you flood all your energy and attention into giving that it will come back. It might not come back in the form of the ego says it should come back in a certain number of views and subscribers, etc. But it will come back in, in the form of support in one way or another. In the form of abundance in one way or another. And you can just trust that because it's, a, it's a, literally a universal law. So just tell that to your mind the next time it's like hyper obsessing over the results and 
um, saying that you're not getting enough back or whatever it says. Because like I said, that can take you into a state of lack. And then when we're in a state of lack, we don't want to give as much. We don't have as much to give because we're in a deficit, right? And really the reason we go to these places for results and lack is because we just don't feel whole. We don't feel like we're enough as we are. Um, so we look for it in the external. So this is just like a movement into knowing you are enough, you are complete, and and connecting with beingness, connecting with your innate wholeness. And this can be done through meditation, um, through yoga, through connecting with a really good healer or guide or therapist or friend. And it can be done through giving your gifts with no expectations. So I think that's a good place to leave this one, guys. Um, I only got to, what did I, three points of about 30 or 40. So <laughs> we may have more podcasts in the near future. I hope this was helpful. Um, so much love to you all. And I will see you on day 14. Namaste.